Okay. Hello, my name is Ethan Becker, and I'm President, uh, CEO, Chief Bottle Washer, and Designer for Becker Knife and Tool Corp. And um, I'm pretty well mostly known for my knife designs, but in the early 80s I designed a pack which has turned out to have some much greater longevity than I thought it would, and I'd like to talk to you about it today. And originally, um, and this had a lot to do with me getting into the knife business actually, I sent two kukri knives with my best friends to Vietnam uh, when they went over there and both of them came back, which I'm extremely grateful for, but the knives didn't. One of them was given to somebody who needed it more because he was still in country and the other one, um, had a kind of catastrophic failure. So <clears throat> they told me what they liked about the knife, which was that it was an extremely useful knife, but it suffered from some little problems. Um, it was designed for people with very small hands, and it was designed for people, uh, it was it, and it had very, very poor steel, it had, um, the handle materials were not jungle friendly. Um, well, the jungle thought it was friendly because it ate them. Um, and um, so I thought, uh, I designed my first knife, which was the Meshax, and sent it off to them. And my friend Bob said, well, that's great. It's a fantastic knife. I really like it. Solved all the problems, but what you really should do is something useful and redesign the Alice pack so that it was wearable and usable. So I said, okay, what should that be? And he said, it had to be no wider than you were. And uh, so because, and also it had to have, it had to be body conformable. Um, the difference between a frame pack, which was what almost everybody I knew in the civilian life was using, is it's a great trail pack. You have a nice, clear trail, think uh, um, uh, <clears throat> the Appalachian Trail, as a for instance. And <clears throat> But the problem is, is that as soon as you get off the trail, that frame is very difficult to use. One of the biggest problems is, is that when you try to duck under something and that frame is still sticking up here, it's going to put you on your back. It's going to wrench your back. Um, it's going to be, um, it's going to be damned un uncomfortable. So, uh, my first pack was a was a was a classic Norwegian ruck, and it was uh, very good in a lot of ways. And then I did some trail camping, and the the backpack was or the frame pack was great. And then one day in uh, central Kentucky, in August, July, August, somewhere around in there, the guy who was supposed to know where we were going off trail didn't, and we ended up in what's called a rhododendron hill. And trying to swim through a big mass of rhododendrons with a frame pack is a wonderful experience. I recommend it to all your enemies. So <clears throat> I combined the experiences I'd had as a, as a backpacker with a, a study of what literature I, c I could find on small unit off-road or off-trail experiences in Vietnam. Uh, there's a great book uh, on the Charlie Rangers. There's a great book. Uh, there's a bunch of books on the LARPs and um, big heroes for me. So I combined the literature with my own experiences and the experiences of my friends who had been there 
and I started to figure out the pack. So this is an original Eagle pack and as you can see it's quite narrow um, and it has access to water and beans on the inside and bullets right in here. So you can put more magazines than you'd ever care to, to have with, uh, to ever care to carry. And these guys, uh, and these pockets all have tunnels all the way through. So if you have to pack a machete, if you have to pack an axe, if you have to pack antenna segments, if you have to pack uh, skis, they're all as close inboard as you can get them so that you're not unbalanced side to side. And, um, and it really, really helps. And you'll notice there's uh, attachment points everywhere so that if you have to bring an ax up to here and, and get it, uh, tie it down, it's very easy to do. And, um, and that's the outside we have, and you'll notice that the lid is very snug fitting and it comes down over the sides to keep out as much water as possible. This has a drawstring top and there are versions that have a roll rollover. On the inside, you have three pockets, actually four. You've got two on each, uh, one on each side, and these are only about eight inches deep for little stuff that you need to find in the dark. A big one, uh, which is full length, um, to help separate stuff out. The trick is, is having pockets that aren't too specific to a particular rig. Um, if you have everything, um, a lot of World War II survival um, uh, packs had little pockets and they were specific to a particular pocket knife or a particular fishing kit or a particular this or a particular that and it makes them useless for anything other than what they were intended for. And to a degree, in a, a parachute seat pack, it makes sense. Um, but the drawstring, by the way, keeps things pretty darn waterproof and easy to do. Um, the South Americans who are using the, the more modern pack from Bongo, um, like the rollover because it keeps the scorpions and stuff out of your gear. I think that's a very positive thing. Um, so anyway, these are for first aid or any other thing you, you, you want somebody to be able to get at in a hurry. Um, and of course, everybody packs everything exactly the same. And so everybody can find stuff easily. And when we get around to the back, the suspension system, this for ni the 1980s was about as comfortable as people knew how to get it. And when I turned the original design over to John Carver at Eagle Industries, he took the basic design and of course, John be being the king of bags, managed to um, put a lot of improvements in it. And as time went on, the pack morphed and it was Kaizen. I mean, Carver was, was, is an amazing guy. The term Kaizen, which means continual product improvement, basically, is uh, there ought to be a picture in a dictionary of John next to that word. And he's, um, he did a huge amount to make the pack a much better pack over a period of years. And then when he sold the company, 
the people who took it over were, um, they had other ideas and I don't think they were particularly good. And then a few years ago, or a couple years ago, my f good friend Joe Flowers called me up and he said, hey, I had a, a guy on my last jungle trip who really wants to talk to you about bringing the Becker Patrol Pack back. And I said, sure. So I got a, uh, ended up talking with Tom Graziano and, um, and his company is Bongo Gear. And um, he took this pack and turned it into this pack. 